I want to talk to all those people who deny the cross of Jesus and who deny his bodily resurrection from the dead. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what you deny. He still rose from the dead and he still was crucified on the cross, whether you like it or not. Okay? He has nothing to lose. You're the one who's going to lose out. Not God. Okay? God is not begging you to repent. He's commanding you to repent. And if you're dead, all your good works, so-called, all your everything is going gonna, is gonna to go down in flames, including you. That's it. Let God be true and every man a liar. God is not begging anyone to repent from their sins. Okay, turn to God. Oh, but Christianity is so hard, I don't understand. Well, that's your problem. We're talking about the deep mysteries of God. You don't have to understand everything. But let me, under, let me tell you something. No matter what you think, oh, let me enjoy myself in this world. Okay? Because you only got one life, one life to live. Sounds like a soap opera, doesn't it? Ah, oh, let me enjoy. Let me eat and drink for, for tomorrow I die. Yeah, but you have to give an account, though. That's the problem, though. That you're forgetting that you can do everything you want, but you have to give an account to God for it, though. Don't you think that you're going to escape God? No, you're not. That's the thing that people who are religious think, and, and, and that's what people who are not religious think. Oh, let me just live it up. Oh, let me do what I want. Let me do what I please. Ah, well, but Ecclesiastes chapter 12 says, listen, do it with all your may, but you're going to have to give an account to God. You're going to have to be judged, though. You're going to have to appear before the living God, okay, and receive the deeds done in the body, whether good or bad. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. And a watchtower society in any other club, okay, Scientology, Baha'i, all, right? all these cults and occults, okay, groups. Can't make God a liar, though. God is. And he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. But you're not seeking him, though. You're setting up your own little salvation plan, okay, that I have to knock the door and store and shop and make proselytes, okay, of men with my deceitfulness. And God is not going to have it, though. No matter what. I mean, he's not going to have it, though. That's just the deal. No, he's not. You think that you can gain Christ. Okay, that's what my opponent said. Okay? I'm trying to gain Christ. I'm trying to earn salvation. I'm trying to buy my way to heaven. I'm trying to gain eternal life. But you can't do it, though. That's the problem, though. You can never do it. Oh, but what do I have to do, says someone? Well, you have to repent from your sins. You have to turn away. And you have to turn to Christ and you have to confess to him. And you know, this is the thing. This was the galling thing to this, this is guy, Tony from Florida. They called me like last week for five hours. I was debating the guy a eh, about the things of the Lord versus the watchtower. Five hours. Are you joking? I don't even have everything on YouTube yet. Five hours I was debating Tony as so-called trouble witness. And he said, listen, forget about the Watchtower. Forget about Kingdom Hall. Forget about the society. Forget about the New World Translation. Just tell me how to come to Christ. And I told him, and I said, listen, you know how to come to Christ? That you tell God that you're a dirty, rotten, disgusting worm of a sinner. That you plead with God. That you confess your sins and crimes to God, though. Not to a priest, but to him. That you say to God that you're sorry. That you say to God, have merciful unto, uh, be merciful unto me, a sinner. That you call upon the name of the Lord, and then you become saved. That's the only way that you're going to go to heaven. That's the only way that you're going to have eternal life. That's the only way. Jesus said, I am the way, Greek word, hadas, I am the truth, Greek word aletheia, I am 
the life. Greek word so, uh, zoe. All that's the deal, though. And you got to come in God's way. You can't say, oh, no, I don't like that. I'm not a worm. I'm a nice guy. I'm a, I'm a nice chap, okay? I give my tidings. I give, I give to the prior. All right. No, you can't say that to God. You get, you have to come as a disgusting rebel. Okay, that's what you are, though. You're a rebel without a cause. Okay, that's what you are, though. And you're a dirty, rotten sinner. Oh, but we can't call people dirty, rotten sinners, he said. Oh, how dare you call me a sinner? And that's what he said, though. But I said, listen, that's what the Bible says. Okay, all your righteousness, uh, righteousness are but filthy rags. <laughs> and she shut up. You're even worse than, than a sinner. You're dead. That's what the Bible says, though. The Bible says that you're dead in trespasses and in sins, though. Oh, but imagine telling me that I'm dead. Oh, I'm alive. What are you talking about that I'm dead? What are you talking about? Well, I say and echo what the Bible says. In Ephesians chapter 2, it calls you dead. That's what it calls you, though. And it doesn't matter if you're a doctor, a lawyer, a uh, uh, candlestick maker, okay? You're dead. Twice dead, plucked by the roots. That's what Jude says, though. Clouds without water. There you go. Foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars who's reserved the blackness of darkness forever. There you go. That's it. I told him that he's a dirty, rotten, disgusting worm. That's what Isaiah uh, says, War of Jacob, chapter 41. But he didn't want to hear it. He, you know what he told me after? This guy, Tony. Okay, <laughs> right? He said, I can't believe that that's Christianity. Well, what do you think Christianity is? Do you go to church and you put a dollar bill in a little, in a little plate and that's it? That's all? No. That's not Christianity. Christianity is being filled with all the fullness of God. That's what Christianity is, though. And he didn't want to hear it. Oh, but I have to gain Christ. I have to work for my salvation. I have to maintain. I, 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 I have to do everything, he says. Not knowing that if you think that you can earn eternal life or buy it in any way, you're going to hell. That's it. That's what God said. I told him, okay, from Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that salvation, eternal life, okay, Greek word ionion, eternal life, Greek word zoe, is a gift. Ah, a gift. But I thought I had to earn salvation. I, I thought that I had to buy God. You can't buy God. What about your sins and crimes? Oh, but the thing is that God is a God of love. Yeah, he is a God of holiness, and he's a God of hate of sin, though. Jacob, okay, have I loved, Esau, have I hated. Oh, but God doesn't hate people. Though. Oh, yeah, he, hate, he hated one person. Oh, but maybe I can wait. Maybe later in life when I'm older, I can make a decision. Yeah, how do you know that you're going to be alive? You don't know that you're going to be alive, okay? You don't know. Is it a guarantee that you're going to be alive until you're, what, 70 and 80 and 90? No, nah, it's not a guarantee that you're going to live through the night. Oh, but I have to gain Christ. Yeah, but, <laughs> okay, I can give you $100 million, okay, as a gift, and did you gain it? Yeah, but did you work for it? No. That's it. And then he hung up on me because he didn't like the gospel. Because he had to come like God wants him to come and he didn't want to come. Oh, but I don't want to come that way. I don't want to call upon the name of the Lord. I don't want to tell him that I'm a sinner. Well, you have to, though. You have to tell him that you're a sinner before you die. And you will die one day, though. That's the thing. That's the key. You're going to die. There is going to come a time where your heart is going to beat for the last time and you're going to take your last breath. Then where are you going to be? 
in front of God, giving an account for all the dirty, rotten, disgusting, miserable things that you did and all the good things that you didn't do. God is worse than Santa Claus, okay? He knows everything you did, everything you said, everything you thought of, and everything you didn't do. And then it's going to be too late when you're dead, though. Then where are you going to be? Oh, I didn't know that you were the Christ. Well, you didn't listen to people that were talking about uh, him, my son, while you were yet alive. You wanted to do what you wanted to do, okay, and now you're dead. And now what? Huh? Well, oh, but I want to live in my way, in my time, in my space. I do what I want to do, what I please, okay? Yeah? Well, that's going to come to an end, though. What does God say in the Bible those things are? Pleasures of sin for a season. They're only for a time. That's it. That's it. Okay, I was shaping in sin and born in iniquity. That's what he said to God, David, though. When he sinned. When he killed somebody and slept with a woman that wasn't even his own. He said, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. He'll have mercy upon me. That's what he said. That's how you come to God. And he, and he will have mercy upon you, though. It doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter what you said. Okay? It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter, though. God came to save sinners, okay? Of whom I'm chief. But he came to save sinners, though. But you got to tell God that you're a sinner. And if you don't, well, out you go. You don't have a wedding garment. It's just like somebody, okay, that, that, that happens to walk in a mansion, okay? And there's a big wedding going on, a big feast. And then... He just happens to be spotted by the master, all right? And he says to the guy, hey, listen, where are your wedding clothes? Ay, ay, ay. How'd you go? You don't have any wedding clothes. Oh, what, what does that mean? Oh, I can't understand religion. What are you talking about? I'm talking about this. Well, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, okay, God's son, you're not going to go to heaven. Period. And I gotta go. It doesn't matter how good you think you are. You stink in the nostrils of God if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, his son. Let me ask you a question on YouTube, everybody out there. If you had a son and somebody wanted to kill your son, will you let that person live with, uh, with you and your son in your house? Do you know that everybody that I speak to say no? Except for one person, okay? I, I think that one person said yes. I don't know what he was drinking, though. How can you let somebody live in your house, okay, and he or she wants to pop your son? Who's going to allow that? Nobody. How can God, the Father, let you go to heaven and have eternal life, and you hate his son. How? The Bible. The only thing that I can say, you heard the evidence, okay? You heard the scriptures. You know that Romans chapter 3, verse 20 says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. That means God's sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. What do you use to clean your face when you see it's dirty? Do you grab the mirror or the water? Which one? Right? You don't grab the mirror. The mirror tells you that your face is dirty. Okay? You grab the water. Well, the Ten Commandments is like a mirror. You can't be saved by the Ten Commandments. Okay? It can only tell you that you're a dead, rotten, miserable word of a sinner. And that you need salvation. You need Christ. And you also have to believe that he was risen from the dead. That he's resurrected. That God the Father raised Christ from the dead after he was crucified on the third day. If you believe, Christ said you have eternal life. If you're dead, you shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon you.
This is Angelo Quinones giving the praise and honor to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys.